Let's start off in Acts chapter 3. In verse 18. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus, Christ, who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to do to you. It shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and to those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these things. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, send him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. So again, in this, he says, repent and turn so you may be refreshed after the burn, after the suffering. Amen. Listen, there isn't anyone that's not going through something. The world's going through it. Everybody's going through something, but the thing is, is you're going through it. In Second Chronicles in chapter 7, one of the things that the burn exposes is what we call emotional defense. Everybody's heard of self-defense, right? It's what they teach self-defense, but it's self. You now think about what that word says. It it's teaches to defend self. Amen? When we're to crucify self. So there's a self-defense, but there's also an emotional defense. And that's one of the things that the burn exposes is emotional defense. And we'll talk about that. Hallelujah. So in 2 Chronicles, in chapter 7, in verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. That's also sacrifice as you give the sacrifice of praise. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land or their bodies. Now my eyes will be opened and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I have coveted it with David, your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, 
and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out from of my sight and make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will answer, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt or bondage, and embraced other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. Humble yourself. That's what he's saying, self, humble. Pray, seek, turn, repent. Amen? You know, what happened is, he says, until these things happen, then you can, then they will hear from heaven and God will forgive and he will release a fresh presence of the Lord. And this is what's happening right now. There's a humbling session going on too. But again, the burn is exposing certain things. And Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore what? Now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in it, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, now look at this, is very important. Set their minds or their souls. Is everybody with me? They set their mind, well, your mind is your what? Your mind, your will, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, amen? So they set their minds, their emotions on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, so there's a difference. For to be carnally minded or soulishly minded is what? Death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. It says because the carnal mind or the carnal soul is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Again, walking according to the flesh set their minds, their minds, their souls on the desires of the flesh. Is everybody with me? See, there's the desires of the flesh, and their minds, their desires, their emotions, and everything involved in their, their mind, their will, their emotions, their imaginations, is set on the flesh, not on the spirit. There's a difference. Is everybody okay? Again, to be carnally minded is setting, <laughs> to be carnally minded, amen, is the setting of emotional mindsets, or where? On the flesh. There's a self-defense again, and there's an emotional defense. There's the protection of self, and there's the protection of emotional attachments, of people, places, and things. These emotional protections are defenders of the flesh and the soulish realm. They're defenders of rebellion, not truth. They are fast to react and slow to hear. These things prevent the refreshing. Again, grab hold of this in the area because they set their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions, their imaginations on the flesh, not on the spirit. Somebody with me? There's a difference. These are emotional defenders, or what we call emotional defense. Because they're protectors of emotion instead of protectors of truth. They're defenders of emotion instead of defenders of truth. There's a difference. 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds or your souls through Christ Jesus. Amen? All right. Anxiousness is an emotional defense. It's usually caused by offense in people's past or traumas that have happened in their past and bring them into the present. They're always talking about their traumas or what happened to them. Listen, there isn't anybody who hasn't been somewhat abused or something when they were younger. You've been rejected. You've been whatever. Amen? You can't use it as an excuse of how you respond or react today. See, people that protect those things are emotional defenders. They haven't reached a level of maturity yet and conversion. So anxiousness is an emotional offense usually caused by offense in the past or traumas past life. Hallelujah. It is fear-based. It's what? Fear-based. Looking for emotional fulfillments from others and not from God. There's always an area of needing self-recognition Some people need to have encouragement all the time. They can't get their encouragement from God. They have to have man to do it. And again, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with encouraging someone. Amen. But there's an area where, you, you know, there should be, you don't have to be encouraged all the time. Why? Because if you need to be encouraged all the time, you're not trusting God. And third John. Verse 2. We don't need emotional defense nor self-defense. We need the presence of God. Beloved, I pray that you may want prosper, grow, mature, advance. In what? All things. And be in what? And be in health. That means good health. Just as you're what? Your soul, your emotions, your mind, your soul gets converted. See, because so many times people easily are swayed and get sick. Amen? Because of the one voice of the stream. Some people sneeze and they think, oh my God, I'm they get worse first thinking all the time. God, I got prosper in all things as your soul prospers or reaching. <laughs> A level of conversion to discern with a higher quality of perception of the truth. Amen? A higher quality of perception. That's the sensitivity of the truth. In James chapter 1 and verse 16. Emotional defense. How I many of y'all know how that, that's the enemy's game? That's his great territory. Amen? Of course, we know that the battlefield is in the mind, but the emotion is connected. Because the mind is associated with the what? The soul. James 1 verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Swift to what? Here, not swift to talk. 
See, emotional defense is always swift to talk, not swift to hear. Slow to speak. Hello. See, it's the opposite way, isn't it? Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to what? Hear. Slow to speak and slow to react. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness, overflow wickedness, and receive with, the meekness, with meekness the implanted word, which is able to what? Save your soul and convert your soul. If anyone is a hearer, oh, on verse 22, but be doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is, he was. When people are emotion, live a life of emotional defense, they can know the word inside out. But when something comes up, boom, it just gets, they go emotion. They don't go into the word. They go emotion. And they can't have victory. And when he, let me tell you, when a, peop, when a person is, lives a life of emotional defense, there are familiar spirits there. There's always a mixed anointing in that. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. So in this, we want to be swift to hear. Amen. Slow to speak. Again, emotional vendors live in the opposite state of mind, not able to cut loose the traumas of the past that influence and affect their present and their present conditions mentally, physically, and spiritually, and especially emotionally. Their loyalty is to emotional fulfillment. Somebody with me? Their loyalty is to what? The emotional fulfillment. Many fall in adultery, fornication, and addiction because their loyalty is to emotion, not truth. Come on, grab this. Why do people backslide? Why do people fornicate? Why do people cheat on their spouses? Because they're loyal to their emotions, not truth. Why do people lie? Hello? Their loyalty is to the emotional fulfillment. Again, many fall into adultery, fornication, and uh, addiction. They compromise. They fall into betrayal. And they break away from, and they break covenant. Why would a person break covenant with God? Because they're loyal to their emotions instead of the truth. Second Timothy 3. Verse 1, and how many of y'all know the enemy plays with your emotions? But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers. That's emotional. Amen? Lovers, is, love is an emotion, isn't it? Lovers of what? Themselves. There'll be emotional desires of sinful passions, sinful things, emotional defenders of self, emotional defenders of money. Hello? There'll be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. Well, isn't pleasure an emotion? Amen. It's a fulfillment of an emotion. Lovers of, again, they're more loyal to emotion than they are truth. Than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. For this sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins and led away by what? Various lusts. Lust and emotion. Yes. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're lovers of emo they're emotional defenders. 
of self, emotional defenders of money. They have enough form of godliness to fool others. But they are carried by familiar spirits, which are highly emotional defenders and promoters. They are easily offended in individuals, very easily offended. They're always talking about their past. Romans chapter 1. You know, as a new creation in Christ, we don't have a past. We have a future. Everyone has had a past, amen? But we don't live there anymore. And we don't bring it into the present. Why do people say those things? Because they make excuses because they're emotion, loyal to emotions instead of not loyal to the truth. Well, you don't know what I went through. Who cares? You don't know what I've done. You don't know. You don't know. You don't understand. Who gives a hoot? Grow up. Amen. Cut loose of your past. You're going to be living from the present, to, from the future to the present, not from the past anymore. People still carrying their pains from yesterday, their abuses from yesterday, their mistakes, their failures, everything else from yesterday. Why? Because that's how they like to get fed. They're emotional defenders. They live a life of emotional defense. They're more loyal to emotion than they are truth. Hallelujah. Romans 1 verse 24. Let's speak it. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, which is their desires, to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Who exchange the what? Truth of God for a what? A live emotion. And worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed for In other words, they worshiped emotion. Emotional <laughs> desires of sinful passion in the hearts and dishonor their bodies that is supposed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. By exchanging the truth for an emotional fulfillment. Because they're more loyal to emotion than they are truth. Ephesians 2. What are your emotions supposed to be? Peace, joy, and righteousness, and Holy Ghost. That's God's love. I guess the Lord wanted to remind us about this. In verse 1, Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive who were what? Dead. Dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the what? Lost emotions of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the soul, of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive in, together with Christ. By grace, by his plan, you've been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, by his plan, you've been saved. Again, by his truth, his plan, you've been saved. Not by how you feel. Saved through faith. And that, that of yourselves, is the gift of God. Amen. The course of this world in emotional defense, not truth defense, it's always about how I feel, believe, and perceive from the soul, not in the spirit. 1 John chapter 2. Emotional defense. 
1 John chapter 2, verse 15. We've been here before. <laughs> Do not what? Love. Lost. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist has come, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had been of us, they would have been, continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I've not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. In other words, in this, they've not reached the level of conversion, discipline, or denial of selfish, soulish emotions. They had to easily sway individuals to make emotional decisions instead of truth decisions. This is the big thing right now. This is where people are making a lot of emotional decisions instead of truth decisions. Amen? We're going to be followers of the king and truth. That's why the Bible says, when Jesus walked in, he said, they said, oh, your mother's here and so forth. He said, man, my mother and father, my brothers and sisters are the ones that do the will of God. Amen? Do the will of God. That means that emotions must be set aside. 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13, verse 11, let's speak it. When I was a child. Now, what's a child like? They're pretty emotional, aren't they? I mean, everything's emotion with a kid. <laughs> Amen? They got to taste something. Yes, it was great. You know, they want the suckers. They want this toy. They want, what are they trying to do? They're always trying to fulfill their desire of emotion, no matter what it is. Even when they go to somebody's house, they claim it is theirs. <laughs> Well, people that live a life of emotional defense are the same way. Hmm. Hallelujah. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became mature, I put away these emotional disasters, <laughs> childish things. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. As a child is emotional and a defender of their feelings, we must reach a level of maturity and mature in an area of sensitive to the reality of the spirit. Without that, there'll be no cutting loose. Unless people cut loose from the emotional defense and emotional fulfillments of all people, places, and things, emotional passions of the flesh, there's nothing wrong with being passionate about something, but don't be passionate about sin. Amen? That's passions, emotional passions of the flesh. It's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And Proverbs 2, verse 10. Glory. What is wisdom? Tells you what? What to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Amen. Knowledge is truth. From above. It says when wisdom enters your heart, your heart is the core of all desires. Is a desire also an emotion? Yeah. So when wisdom begins to take place in here, from above, and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. In other words, it's fulfilling. That's why the Word of God should be fulfilling to you. Discretion will what? Preserve you. That's discerning. Understanding will what? Keep you. To deliver you from the way of evil. Well, snap. From the man who speaks perverse things. 
from those who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are, who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral woman or man, from seductresses or seducers who flatter with their words, who forsakes the companion of their youth and forgets the covenant of their God. For their house leads down to death and their paths to death. None who go to their house return, nor do they again regain the path of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep the paths of righteousness and upright will dwell in the land. The blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Wisdom enters the heart of desire and knowledge becomes refreshing because it's truth. Does everybody get it? And now that becomes your fulfillment. See, truth should be our fulfillment. God's presence is our fulfillment. We can't be loyal to emotion. We are loyal to the presence of God in truth. When people are loyal to emotion, they're not trusting. You never know when they're going to betray you. We're going to close in 2 Timothy 4. How many times has somebody told you they were going to go do something and didn't do it? You can't depend on them to show up. Amen? Why? Because they're always, something always comes up emotionally. Well, you don't know how I feel. Bummer. 2 Timothy chapter 4. You don't know what I've been through. Jesus knows. You don't have to share it with me. <laughs> Amen? Only God can change us. You want counsel, correction, and direction? Be loyal to the truth and not emotion. That's the simplest thing I can tell you. Verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Hmm. Are you ready? Speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and Lord Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Hello. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own hello desires of emotion, because they have what? Itching ears. Wow. They will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. In other words, emotions. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your what? Ministry. Hallelujah. They will forget the truth because of their emotional desires. And they will seek to please self, man, lust, and others of the same desire. They look, they'll search, search them out. They fall outside of the will of God and they get entrapped in the nets of emotional distress. Again, the simplest thing that can be released by the Spirit tonight is do not be loyal to emotions. Be loyal to the truth because it will mess you up. Amen? Pull you right out. Causes people to fall, fornicate. Causes them to go back to drugs. Causes them to lie. Addiction. Be loyal to the truth and not to emotion. Amen? It's so vitally important because this is how the enemy's playing with people right now. Because once you open yourself up to that, you open yourself up to familiar spirits. And they love it. Remember, the devil gets fed by what? Emotion. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word and for your warning. We thank you because you're faithful. 
and you're true, and there is none like you. So, Lord, what you release to us tonight, Lord, bring to remembrance as we battle, not only through the things of our thought and conversion of our soul, but the emotional attacks that the enemy brings forth, that we may discern these things and destroy these things so that the truth will guide us and free us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.